Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video is composed of things that I tinkered with throughout the day. For step-by-step -step detailed instructions of those tasks, you can click on the links in the comment section below. This video should contain tips and tricks of things that I've learned throughout the year. Now, I only plan on leaving this video posted for about 30 days. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to show you uh, what I'm going to call a tuna for your Keurig uh, coffee maker. This is probably the flagship model, a couple variations of it, but there are, from what I could tell by looking at other videos and other people's issues, there's four major problems or primary issues that these machines have. And in this video, I'm going to try to combine those and give you a kind of tune-up that you may want to do to this machine the first time you have any issue. That way, you clear all the problems out and start fresh and should have a machine that will run a year or two without issues. If you run into a different issue every two or three months, you know, you may end up buying another machine or doing something else. And it's best just to tune the machine up. Hopefully, it'll last you several years without uh, failing to uh, make coffee for you. One of the things that I believe the machine does, it has a water sensor in it somewhere that lets the machine know if there's enough water in it to make a large cup of coffee. Over here, you have three different size cups. 6 ounce, 8 ounce, 10 ounce, and if it didn't have 10 ounces of water in it to make a large cup, it'll send a light that's normally lit in here, and that light will flash, telling you to add water. Well, I had the level up to there, and it's still flashing water, or flashing the light. What they're doing now is unplugging the machine and plugging it back in to... Uh, re-engage the sensor system and then it'll say okay there's enough water to make a cup of coffee so that's one of the issues that this one has I'm going to go through the three or four main issues and then we'll hopefully have a full complete video for you from what I've experienced the most common issue is the probe and tube in the top front of it gets clogged with coffee when you install a cup it puts the cup there this needle punctures the cup it's sitting in the cup water comes through makes the coffee and at the end of the coffee cycle it gives a burst of air to clean to clear all of the water out of the tube and when it does that I call it a cough it coughs and has a slight vacuum to close the check valve. When it does that vacuum, sometimes it brings some of the coffee grains out of the cup into the tip of the thing that punctures it, and that starts a cycle of buildup in the end of that. Over time, you get a smaller and smaller cup of coffee to where you're using the 10 ounce button to get seven or eight ounces of coffee so that thing needs to be cleared out so that's the most common issue let me go ahead and explain to you what people say to do to take care of that you open up the unit this cup dispenser simply snaps out it's got a couple of latches there you look down in there you make sure those holes are clear some people put a uh, paper clip through there or run water through there. You want to make sure that's cleared out. Not that difficult. The next thing, you see the metal needle thing there that punctures the cup. It has two or three channels. I think three channels. People take a paper clip, push it up in there, which breaks up the compacted coffee grounds in there. Then they run it and it flushes those grounds back into the coffee dispenser and gives you, you know, almost a clean start. Not quite clean. There are two better ways to clear that out. 
than just poking a paper clip up in there. One is to remove these two screws. Let me see if I can get a light on. You got two Phillips screws there. One there, one there. You unscrew those screws and you manipulate the top of this off. It's not really latched in place, but with a little maneuverability and pressure, you can get those out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those two screws out and remove the top of that. If you need to move the machine around, go ahead and lift your tank off and out of the way so that you don't pour water out of it that's sitting there. There is a little water sitting in the bottom of there. And as you can see, there's a little screen filter in there to prevent too much uh, sludge per se from going through into the machine. So let me go ahead and pull those two screws and remove this lid. You need a relatively pointy screwdriver. I call it a one or a two. A longer one may be better or a short stubby one would be really good. Now when you take these screws out, for the first time they're kind of uh, snug in there. Hold your hand on top of the unit put a little pressure on the screw to break it loose, then remove the two screws. With the handle all the way up, I pushed it up and kind of back, and then it comes forward like that and out of there. So that back piece is hooked on there, so you gotta ratchet it back, then lift it out. Here's a tube that sometimes you can see coffee grounds in. That'll actually pull up and unplug from that. Uh, they usually have, some of them have a zip tie on them. If you want to be careful not to break something, you may take those two screws out. But let me see if I can massage that off of there to make sure that needle is clear. Use a screwdriver to, ply, to pry this hard plastic ring up toward the top. It's helping keeping the soft tube onto that. So next you want to blow through that top tube or stick paper clip or something down through there to make sure you don't have any build up there. Because that build up will reduce the amount of coffee that flows through there. So let me go grab a paper clip and make sure that's cleared out. You have a bobby pin, but you could use paper clip, something. Push up through these channels on this needle. And just bring it out the top like you see there. And make sure that's just all cleaned out. That way whenever you run the machine, it's not having restriction. With coffee grounds. Like I said, some people actually see coffee grounds up in here. So let me poke through there. Push this tube on. Slide that collar back on there. Lock that in place. And be done with this portion of it. That's all cleaned out, putting the tube back on it, massaging the tube down as far as it'll go, then locking it in place with this collar. As you can see, I pushed that collar down till I got the black tube back up through there. That should be good to go. So I'm going to push this back down over there, make sure it's hooked under, pull it forward, screw it back down lock it in place I'm gonna close it make sure it's not up like that it shouldn't be up like that it should be hooked in the back of there so that that's down and secure now the unit will still work if this is not in right but as you can see the back of it's now hooked in place the front of it's down I'm gonna put those two little screws in there do your best not to drop those screws in the unit somewhere you'll be shaking them out but you can magnetize your screwdriver to help you not drop those in there. Once it's loose, you can use a short screwdriver, but whatever one you got needs to have almost a sharp tip. Try not to strip, strip the screws out. Blew the bottom of the cup out. There's also a slot in that needle there. Make sure that's cleared out. And the uh, thing is ready to lock back in place. It's got an arrow there. Just clip it back in place so that it's not out. Pop, pop, pop. Three latches. That's ready to go. Next, you have the fill valve down there. It's got a screen on it. 
you could do one of two things. You could take those three screws out, rinse all that stuff back out, and put it back together. You want to be careful if you take that apart. You put it back together properly. Don't just take it apart and not pay attention to how it goes back together. It looks like that thing has a little screw valve on it. And like I said, take it apart, rinse it out, put it back together. It's got a spring-loaded uh, valve in it. If that valve is clogged up, it won't flow the water in there fast enough down into the tank assembly and that'll help it know that it has enough water to filter so I'm gonna try to pull those screws out rinse that out not sure what this other thing is on this side but I'm not going to mess with that that may be some kind of magnetic float that communicates with something on the inside of that letting you know you don't have enough water in there so let me go and drain that water down. That float will probably go down and trigger the machine to know it doesn't have enough water to uh, run a full cup. All right, yeah, that little disc in the tank is probably a magnetic float. When I got the water out of there, that drops. So when you uh, are full of water, it floats and it should be triggering the sensor in there. To let it know you got enough water in the tank. Anyway, I poured this water out of here. I'm going to pull those two screws out. Uh, take that apart and clean that by hand. I pulled the screws out of there. And that is only a screen. So I cleaned out the bottom of that. The uh, plunger there. You could push it in and out. But uh, didn't seem to have anything in there. So next, I'm going to. Remount the tank as so and the last two things that you could do is one this is a vacuum uh, port that when the water is flowing through the machine if you clog that up it creates more pressure and when you let it go it'll create a surge to clean out any sludge in that and last but not least you can if you have this kind the uh, turkey baster trick that not work. So you need to put water in there, let water drain down in the machine, lift the tank off, and then turkey baster that, which will flush water in and out of the system to help it uh, get rid of any sludge that's in the water fill system. So I'm gonna go get water, put it in here, and then I'm going to turkey baser at the bottom. You may be able to turkey baser through the screen. I don't know. But I'm definitely going to turkey baser directly on that. Hopefully that will uh, pressurize that, that gravity flow system. Open it up so that the machine works better and faster. And again, this lets the, that float, which you see is sticking on this machine. It lets the system know that there is enough or not enough uh, water in the tank to function it's full or a lot of water in it as you can see the float is up I'm gonna put this back on here let it lock in place and water should drain down into the system so I'm gonna take the turkey baser put it on top of the screen and activate it actually you want to suck water up in it first I got water in it suck water up in it first then put it over there and give it some squeezes in and out this turkey baser is leaking I don't know if that's good or bad for me what I'm trying to do here but as you can see the levels going up and down And I'm going to do the same thing with the tank off of it, just to make sure I'm creating the uh, action that I want to do. Hopefully that 
clears out some of the sludge in there per se. Oop, I got some around that cup, so I'm gonna have to wipe that up. And this thing uh, should work fine. Last but not least, when it's brewing the first cup of coffee, when it gets half full, I'm gonna plug this up with my finger, hold it three seconds, let it go. Hopefully that don't make a burst to make this thing work flawlessly. And that's the completion of the tuna. Have the blue light, which is good. Letting you know it's heating up, not ready yet. When the cup gets half full, I'm gonna plug that with my finger, hold it three seconds and let it go. So, without coffee in there, see if I get a cup full, ready to brew, push the button. Like I said, when it's half full, I'm gonna plug this and release it. Getting a good flow, plugging it, release it. See how that goes. Before I started the process, I was getting a little bit less than that using the 10 cup setting. So now it's not resetting where we have to unplug it and plug it back in. It's got a nice steady blue light. It's filled up. It's ready to brew. I'm going to go ahead and choose the large cup this time. See how much I get. Choose the larger one this time. Let it go ahead and brew. Running that vent on this one didn't seem to do anything. But let's see if we get a full cup this time. Yep, got a full cup. Several people are having issues with these fancy toilet paper roll things sliding out, not holding in properly. A lot of people don't know it, but they have a screw in the bottom of them. So what you gotta do is slide it in, get a small screwdriver, and put that where it catches. Then snug it down just a little bit, not much. Let me get under here and get this screw tightened up a little bit more until it gets that. And my assumption is you want that screw to set where that ridge is on the bar. I turned the screw up until it started grabbing the bar. I slid the bar across till it got caught in that ridge. And then I turned the screw up a little more till it was snug. You can leave it rocking or you can make it snug. But if it comes back out, remember, you're going to have to... Tighten that screw in. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.